I call the Maplewood City Council meeting to order on Tuesday, May 23rd. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> I want to make sure that I say the land acknowledgement properly. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Kickapoo, Osage, Miami, Iroquois, and Great Sioux Nation people. Please rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member Farrell? Here. Council Member Falkenham? Council Member Garcia? Here. Council Member Homa? Here. Mayor Knapper? Here. Council Member Maddox? Here. Council Member Page? Here. Madam Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number five, please. Motion to excuse motion to excuse councilperson. May I have a motion to excuse councilperson Falkingham? So moved. Second. Seconded. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number six. Approval of this council agenda. May I have a motion? Motion to approve the council agenda. Second. Any discussion? Anyone, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number seven. Public hearing to hear citizens' comments on the proposed 2023-24 fiscal year budget for the city of Maplewood. At this time, anyone joining us in the chambers is welcome to step to the podium if they would like to provide public comment regarding the 2023-2024 fiscal year budget for the city. And if you are joining us by Zoom, please raise your hand and Mr. Reese will call upon you. All right, thank you. Madam Clerk, item number eight, please. Public hearing by plan and zoning to hear citizens' comments on a request for a conditional use permit to operate an office facility in the LR district for Redbird HVAC at 3220 Greenwood Boulevard, 7433 Commonwealth Avenue, two-story brick building at the southeast corner of Greenwood and Commonwealth. At this time, the public is invited to provide comment regarding this agenda item. If you're joining us in the chambers, please step to the podium. And if you're joining us via Zoom, please raise your hand. There are no hands on Zoom now. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number nine. Public forum. At this time, the public is invited to provide comment on whatever they would like. I won't give the instructions again. Come on up. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Let's... I'm sorry. You, we make you work. I'm sorry. You got to push the button the whole time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can everyone hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Johnny Lewis. I am a member of the Maple Richmond Heights Youth Sports Board as well on the Sports Commission. Um, I'm here today to speak on behalf of the Sports Board. Um, we are at a true partner of the city. We believe in all of the DEI uh, parts of the plan, uh, providing services to all those in need. Um, right now, we do have a relationship with the city and the parks district to where we do utilize the parks being Deer Creek, Ryan Harmer, as well as Kellogg at some times for all of our sports program. Um, has been brought to it's been brought to our attention that we are going to be charged for the usage of our parts um which honestly i feel it's not quite fair considering what we do for the community um 
we provide services to every child in this city, regardless of your socioeconomic background, your physical abilities, or even your educational abilities. Um, we provide scholarships to every citizen if needed. Uh, sometimes it's based on your equivalent reduced lunch, but also just families who can't pay. Um, just in the past year alone, we've had, we've written off $5,639 worth of unpaid um, fees. In addition to that, we provided another $4,200 in scholarships, providing uniforms and free fees to participate in our programs. Right now, we have about nine different programs from volleyball to soccer to tennis. Um, we even in the process of starting our robotics program because that need was presented to us. So whenever a citizen in this community approaches us for an opportunity to do something, we feel that it's in our duty as citizens of this great area to stand up and provide that service. Um, we do not have middle school sports. We do not have elementary sports as in some areas, but it all comes down to MRHU sports. We don't ask for much. We rely on a lot, a lot of donations. Um, there was even a time when we had enough donations. We saw a need in this city to enhance Bryant Homer Park to where we offered the money that was donated to us to help the city with the parks. Um, we feel that as an organization and a 501c that we should not have to pay to use the parks for our youth sports. Uh, thank you very much for your time. If anyone ever wants to learn a little bit more about our organization, please feel free to contact me. I would love, I would love to talk to you. We're always looking for volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional public comment? No hands on Zoom there. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 10. Announcements? I have no announcements. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 11. Approval of the May 9th, 2023 City Council meeting minutes. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Madam Clerk, item number 12. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, authorizing the City Manager to execute a contract with Hendel Lawn Care for grass cutting services. May I have a motion? <clears throat> motion approved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Falkingham. Council Member Garcia. Yes. Council Member Homa. Yes. Mayor Knapper. Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Resolution 2320 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 13. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri to retain the services of Stifle. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Resolution 2321 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 14. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Patrick Jugo to the Board of Adjustment and Housing Board of Appeals and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2028. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? All right, so I told y'all uh, last time that I'd give you the reason uh, to my appointment. And so for Mr. Uh, Jugo, the reason why I appointed him is because He's pretty much an expert at this at this point for the Board of Adjustments. And um, you'll see there's some other appointments that are coming on that we'll learn from him. So that's my reasoning for that. Hearing no other, no further discussion, excuse me. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Homa? 
Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Resolution 2322 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 15. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Brian Newman to the Board of Adjustment and Housing Board of Appeals and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2028. Mr. Newman, submit, I'm sorry, we have a motion. Motion to approve, seconded. All right, any discussion? I was just running in now. Okay, so Mr. Newman uh, submitted his application to the city in 2021, and he is a an architect, and I think it would behoove us to have someone with that experience on that board. Any further discussion? Hearing on Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Resolution 23-23 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 16, please. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Linda Robinson to the Board of Adjustment and Housing Board of Appeals and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2028. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Robinson currently serves on the Civil Service Board. When I reached out to her, the Civil Service Board is not met. And so she would like to offer her time to another board. Also, um, I talked with Ms. Robinson about the importance of the Board of Adjustments as well as the planning zoning. And so I asked her to be sure what, what she is learning in that um, uh on the board of adjustments that she essentially starts like a communication or a line of communication with plan and zoning. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Resolution 23-24 is approved. Madam Clerk, item number 17, please. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Melanie Brady as an alternate to the Board of Adjustment and Housing Board of Appeals and establishing her term of office is expiring June, 20th, June 30th, 2028. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? So... I think we are finally fulfilling the request of um, Mr. Jugo, Jugo, because he's been asking for a while now to have an alternate. Um, and Ms. Brady has agreed, and she too is going to work to ensure that there is communication between the Board of Adjustments and uh, Plan and Zoning. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Resolution 23-25 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 18. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Melanie Brady to the Civil Service Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2027. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All right, the Civil Service Commission was Ms. Brady's first choice, and I talked with her about it, um, and, and she is very interested in learning about how that process um, takes place and honestly, hopefully she, she won't get to learn about it because <laughs> Because when we have that process take place, then we have conflict. Um, but because it was her first choice, uh, I, I provided that to her. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. 
Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Resolution 23-26 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 19. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Dennis George to the Civil Service Commission and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2027. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Again, uh, Mr. George had submitted an application in 2021, and this is his first choice. And so I'd like to honor uh, that. Each, each time that I've asked him if he wanted to serve, he's always said yes. So we can finally um, grant him the opportunity to serve. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Falkingham. Council Member Garcia. Yes. Council Member Hola. Yes. Mayor Knapper. Yes. Council Member Maddox. Yes. Council Member Page. Yes. Council Member Corral. Yes. Resolution 23-27 is approved. Madam Clerk, how are you doing? I'm, I'm taking sips as you talk. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. <laughs> Madam Clerk, I don't remember telling you, right? A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Jenny Schmidt to the Civil Service Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2027. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Schmidt is an attorney and with the Civil Service Commission, you do want to have an attorney that has experience having a hearing. Um, so that and then the council requested that, which was smart. So any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Resolution 23-28 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 21. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Lisa Griffin to the Design and Review Board and Historic Preservation Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Griffin is an architect. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Can you Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Resolution 23-29 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 22. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Ricky Boato to the Human Services Commission and establishing his term of, off of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Boato came before us and asked for the Parks Board. And you look at his application and resume, he's a perfect fit for the Parks Board. Why did I appoint him to the Human Services Commission? One, because he um, he did list the Human Services Commission pretty high in his choices. It wasn't too far from number one. But there was something in my gut that told me he would be good for the Human Services Commission. And then I talked to him, and he said that he sees how gentrification is pushing out moderate income families. And he he would like to help the city at least keep the residents that we have here. And so I told him, I was like, it was a gut feeling and my gut was right. So I, I asked him if he would serve and he said yes. So yeah, I, I feel good about this one for a while. <laughs> I know. Parks will be there in 26. I know, yeah. <laughs> All right, further discussion. Hearing no, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Resolution 23 30 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 23. 
a resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Jenna Miller to the Human Services Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. We have a motion. Motion approved. Seconded. Any discussion? So Ms. Ms. Miller um, was in our chambers and she came to the podium when we had the work session and she said that she loved data and Human Services Commission is all about data. Uh, I reached out to her and spoke with her. She is a professor at the St. Louis Community College and she focuses on mental health. She is a perfect fit for Human Services Commission. Any further discussion? Hey, Madam Clerk, roll we'll call vote, please. Council Member Meta? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Resolution 23 31 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 24. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Martin Brenner to the Library Board and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Brenner previously served a term on the Library Board, and he was a part of the team that uh, successfully had got the bond passed. So he asked to serve again and. I wholeheartedly welcomed him back at that opportunity. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Mattox? Yes. Resolution 23-32 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 25. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Corinne Char to the Library Board and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion approved. Seconded. Any discussion? I uh, sought the appointment of Ms. Char because of what she said uh, when we were in that work session and she said she wanted to help support the library and push back from the state trying to uh, tell libraries what books they should have. And I like an activist, so that's it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Resolution 23-33 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 26. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Evan Loveless to the Library Board and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Loveless also served on the library board during the passage of the bond. So I definitely would like to have him back. So he has an opportunity to um, put that into, into work, the bond into work. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Resolution 23-34 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 27. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Dan Rubin to the Library Board and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Rubin was also on the library board and I'd like for him to have an opportunity to serve again. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Resolution 23-35 is approved. Thank you. Item number 28, please, Madam Clerk. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Stephen 
Brewer to the Parks and Recreation Commission and establishing his term of office is expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Brewer listed the Parks uh, and Recreation Commission as his first choice, and he also has an extensive background in parks. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Corral? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Resolution 23-36 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 29. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Teresa Murphy to the Parks and Recreation Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? So Ms. Murphy does not have a a background in parks and recreations like Mr. Brewer. However, she was very excited at the opportunity to um, serve in the park, on the park commission. And so I'd like to give her that opportunity. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Resolution 23-37 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 30. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Laney, Laney Schenkelberg to the Parks and Recreation Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. You be well, Madam Clerk. <laughs> May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Schenkelberg currently serves as the president of this commission, and she has worked with her um, colleagues to make sure that we have the, the master plan. So she really pushed that through. Definitely would like for her to remain on so she can continue to see that through. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Resolution 23-38 is approved. Madam Clerk, item number 31. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Brad Jackson to the Plan and Zoning Commission and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion approved. Second. It's all right. <laughs> Any discussion? All right. So uh, I would like to appoint Mr. Jackson to the Planning Zoning Commission because of the work that they are currently doing now and his personal experience with housing that he is actively dealing with right now. I think someone that has a personal experience with trying to find housing in our community will have um, a different perspective when it comes to planning zoning and be um, active in finding solutions to make sure that residents can stay here, that want to stay here. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Corral? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Resolution 23-39 is approved. Madam Clerk, item number 22. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing, appointing Pickett Lima to the Plan and Zoning Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Lima has been on the Plan and Zoning Commission doing a lot of work um, regarding zoning and how we can usher in housing in the form of like multi-housing. And so I'd like for her to continue to be able to do that work on this commission. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Corral? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. 
Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Resolution 23-40 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 33. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Kevin Sullivan to the Plan and Zoning Commission and establishing his term of office is expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion approved. Seconded. Any discussion? I know Mr. Sullivan is the president of the commission. He's been here many times and he wants to continue the work. And I think we are highly favored that he does. Any further discussion? Can you roll call vote, please? Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Cal Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Resolution 23-41 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 34, please. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Gotham Gotla to the Special Dis Business District Tax Advisory Commission and establishing his term of office is expiring June 30th, 2026. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Gottla owns is a uh, co-owner of the post, and I've had an opportunity to have conversations with him. He's extremely, extremely bright, and also he is like a solution finder, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hang on, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Garcia. Yes. Council Member Homa. Yes. Mayor Knapper. Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Cockingham? Resolution 23-42 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 35, please. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Carmen Rayburn to the Special Business District Tax Advisory Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Second. Any discussion? As you all know, Ms. Rayburn is co-owner uh, of the Blue Duck, Fabulous Pastries. <laughs> but on top of that, she's, she is um, a bright mind and beloved by the community. And it was a council uh, person's request. So. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Holm. Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Resolution 23-43 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 36. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing August Schlafly to the Special Business District Tax Advisory Commission and establishing his term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Schlafly um, is finishing up a term on the Special Business District Advisory Commission, and I have also found him to be open to hearing um, a variety of, of ideas and he's not quick to rush to a decision. He actually will think about it and then come back and talk with you about it. So I think that's um, a great asset to our city as well as this commission. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Correll? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Resolution 23 44 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 37. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Cynthia Boxerman to the Sustainability Commission and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Boxerman currently serves on the Sustainability Commission, and they are doing a lot of good work. They have created like a cohort throughout the region. So I would like for her to remain so she can continue with that work. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Resolution 23-45 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 38. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Nancy Schick to the Sustainability Commission and establishing her term of office is expiring June 30th, 2026. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Schick was the community member that went back to school um, and is an attorney and is focusing on environmental law. I don't, I think y'all get it. <laughs> All right. Right. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Council Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Resolution 23-46 is approved. Madam Clerk, item number 39. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Colleen Cunningham to the Maplewood Community Growth Fund Board and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2025. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Cunningham um, works for a nonprofit organization that focuses on racial justice. She would be an asset to the Community Growth Fund. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Falkingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Resolution 23-47 is approved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Item number 40. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Marilyn Green to the Maplewood Community Growth Fund Board and establishing her term of office is expiring June 30th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Green is a grant writing business owner and consultant, and we need a grant writer on <laughs> So, we, so the firm can get some money. <laughs> right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Buckingham? Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Corral? Yes. Resolution 23 48 is approved. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. Last one. <laughs> Item number 41, please. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, appointing Kat Norton to the Maplewood Community Growth Fund Board and establishing her term of office as expiring June 30th, 2026. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Norton is a vital part of the MRH School District and having um, Ms. Norton on the fund board, it, it's kind of perfect. It just, yeah, it would tie in the school with the community. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Homa? Yes. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Maddox? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Carell? Yes. Council Member Fockingham? Resolution 23 49 is approved. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, y'all. Good job. Yes. I know. <laughs> All right. Madam Clerk, item number 20, excuse me, item number 42. 2023 Council Retreats. All right, thank you. So I realized after some discussion um, with council members that we need to have a retreat. So everyone has an understanding of our resolutions and um, sunshine laws and all that fun stuff. And so 
Um, I, you all saw the memo. I spoke with Mr. Reese about uh, making sure that that it that we had fifteen hundred dollars in the budget that we are going to um, vote on today, so we can have that retreat. So I'm looking to have it sometime in um, July, and it will not be during the week. Um, when, when the previous council had a retreat. I, I asked Mr. Reese about this. We had some time in the evening on a Friday, and then we finished up on a Saturday. I think we could probably do everything on a Saturday, like getting it like nine or 10 and be done by three or four and call it a day. So we don't have that consultant thing. So it's just, right. that took a lot of time. Right, right. So, yes, we won't be doing that. We'll go over the strategic plan um, just so everyone is. is putting eyes on it at the same time, any questions that, you know, you all would like to ask, you have the opportunity to do that, but it, it shouldn't take that long. <clears throat> all right, item number 43, Madam Clerk. Bill number 6221, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, adopting the budget for the City of Maplewood, Missouri for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, through June 30th, 2024. That was the first reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Madam Clerk, second reading, please. Bill number 6221, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, adopting the budget for the City of Maplewood, Missouri, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. That was the second reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The third and final reading will take place at the next council meeting. Madam Clerk, item number 44. Bill number 6222 an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, granting a conditional use permit to Jerry Pearson's to allow an office facility in the LR Limited Residential District at 3220 Greenwood Boulevard, 7743 Commonwealth Avenue. That was the first reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Madam Clerk, second reading, please. Bill number 6222, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, granting a conditional use permit to Jerry Pearson's to allow an office facility in the LR Limited Residential District at 3220 Greenwood Boulevard, 7743 Commonwealth Avenue. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. The third and final reading will take place at the next council meeting. Madam Clerk, item number 45. Welcome, Maplewood. Five-year plan and diversity, equity, inclus inclusion, and belonging policy by ConstructNet. Patricia Arandando, project manager. Belinda McFeeters, senior consultant. And Cortland Lee, senior consultant. Okay, so let me bring our uh, consultants in here. Welcome, Belinda. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Patricia, welcome. And Portland should be joining us momentarily. Yes. Maybe I promoted the wrong person. I think I promoted the wrong person. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go.
There it's Corbin. Good evening. I got caught in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, uh, we have our consultants that 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 you all hired um, over a year ago, and uh, our team's been working hard at this. And um, this is part of our Welcome Maplewood policy and plan. And we have a somewhat lengthy presentation before you tonight, but this uh, represents a lot of hard work and we think a great product. So I'm gonna turn it over to our consultants now. And I'm not sure who's gonna kick us off, but uh, you're on. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Patricia Ardondo and I am the project manager for the City of Maplewood uh, partnership with ConstructNet. As Michael said, we have been engaged in this collaboration for uh, over a year. And as project manager, I have had the opportunity, the privilege to see all phases of this work unfold. Uh, we started with what's called leadership alignment, working with all the city leaders. The second phase of work was our equity audit or equity assessment. And a number of you were part of that interviewing process, which then informed the strategic planning process that uh, Cortland, Dr. Lee was involved with as uh, he worked with Michael and other city manage uh, other uh, people on and on Michael's team. And then uh, Dr. Belinda McFeeders worked with us staff as well to develop the racial and social equity policy. So it's been a real privilege. It's been a, a great journey. But what I would say to all of you is this is how change happens incrementally. Uh, we've taken measured steps. We've had great engagement and the support of you, members of the city council, mayor, have been incredibly important for this process to move forward. And especially with the welcome Maplewood um, kind of a mantra here. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. I think Cortland Lee, you're going to start it off. Dr. Lee will start and then he'll be followed by Dr. McFeeters. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Patricia. Good evening, everyone. Um, let me pull my uh, screen up here so we can get started. Okay, I know that the screen is loading. So at this point, you should be able to see my screen. So let me just um, do a perception check here. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Okay. So what uh, Dr. McFeeters and I are gonna present tonight uh, is the, uh, as part of the Welcome Maple Wood Initiative, the five-year strategic plan that has been developed as well as the, the DEIB policy. So, um, this was all, I think, started with the resolution that um, City Council pa uh, passed back in 2021, um, basically um, following uh, some issues that had taken place. I'm not gonna read this, you all, I'm sure are very, very familiar with this, but this resolution really has been driving um, a lot of this effort or probably most of this, this effort. Um, <clears throat> So I want to just for a minute um, let you look at some of the um, DEIB efforts that the mayor, the city council, you folks, and the city manager have been involved in. I'm, I'm not going to, to go over all of these. You, you can see what they are. You've done an awful lot um, over the past several years in terms of really advancing DEIB and, and racial and social justice. Um, perhaps the, the smartest thing you did past couple of years is the last bullet, and that is to hire ConstructNet to come up with a racial and social equity plan, as well as, as the policy, which we're going to, to look at tonight. Um, so let me just share with you, and, and uh, Patricia sort of talked a little bit about this, but I want to go over uh, in a little bit more detail uh, the phases of this project. There, there were four phases, as you can see, to, the, um, uh, to this project. We started really doing a series of professional development workshops with um, the city manager and department heads. This was back a year ago, February and March of, of 2022. Uh, we don't call what we do training. It was, they were professional development workshops, as you can see, focusing on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging principles. We did three of these 
um, with the city manager and the department heads. The second phase was to perform an equity audit, which I think um, many of you are familiar with. Um, Dr. Linda Liang and myself were involved in doing that equity audit, which was based, basically doing a series of, of interviews with um, city stakeholders um, about their perception of uh, racial and social equity uh, within Maplewood. Um, we did this equity audit. We basically presented uh, a report to um, the city. And we also did a presentation on this um, about a year or so ago. I'm sure many of you remember that. Um, and this equity uh, audit was really important because it formed the basis for what we did with the strategic plan as well as the policy. Um, and we also, um, in the third phase, assisted the city council in developing the DEIB policy, which Dr. McFeeders will be going over in a little bit. And the fourth phase was creating a five-year racial, social, and equity, a social, a racial and social equity plan, um, which I'm going to go over um, in a few minutes. Um, so this is what we plan to um, present to you tonight, um, phase four, um, which is really um, both the five-year plan and the um, DEIB policy, which kind of go hand in hand. So we're really going to give you an overview of both the five-year plan as well as the DEIB uh, policy. Um, so what was our what was our objective with the five-year strategic plan? Um, one of the reasons why we did the equity audit was to give us data that would help us to basically create this five-year racial and social equity plan. Um, we wanted to see where were the needs, uh, where did the city really need to focus its efforts in terms of advancing racial and social equity over a five-year period. So we used the findings from that equity audit. They were really helpful to help us and really help the, the department heads um, really create the five-year racial and social equity plan. And this plan, as you're going to see, includes goals. What goals do we need to establish based on what we found in the equity audit? What are the action steps that we're going to engage in to really meet our goals? And most importantly, how are we going to measure what we did? How are we going to know whether or not what we did was successful or not? How are we going to measure our performance? I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, so as I said, uh, as we think about the approach to this strategic plan, um, we use the equity audit findings um, to really develop the goals. And I have to really give a real shout out uh, to the city manager and the department heads because they did all the work on this. Um, they did some phenomenal work on developing five-year goals, department by department. Um, and um, they worked really hard in develop some in incredible work, as you'll see in just a minute. And then working with us, the uh, constru uh, construct our consultants, uh, in, in particular uh, me, because I was kind of the point person on this, um, they developed um, strategic planning templates, which you're going to look at a sample of in just a minute. And these strategic planning templates lay out really the heart and soul of this five-year strategic plan. Um, basically, in the strategic plan, what came out of this are um, a set of goals. Um, these are basically what the city of Maplewood really wants to achieve within the five-year period. Um, you know, what are our goals that we want to accomplish over the next five years? How are we going to basically know that these action steps are being implemented. So there's some community indicators and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes and you'll also see what community indicators look like. Um, what actions, what specific actions basically are departments going to engage in to achieve the goals? So, you know, how are people gonna really roll up their sleeves um, to really do the work to achieve the goals? And each of the goals has a timeline, um, a time frame, looking at you know when this goal, this action is going to be accomplished, and who's going to be accountable for seeing overseeing um, 
the actions and overseeing basically that the goal hopefully is realized. And in many respects, most importantly, how are we going to know whether or not we have been successful in achieving our goal? So performance measures, and these performance measures are quantifiable, um, really looking in most cases at some hard data, some hard numbers um, that really sort of indicate that yes, we have the data that shows that we basically have um, met our goals. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna share with you now is a sample, a representative sample of the five-year strategic planning templates. Um, as part of the whole Welcome to Maplehood initiative. Now, we're in the process now of completing the actual strategic plan. Um, and it'll be ready in about three weeks. Hopefully, we, we want to have it ready by the, middle, uh, by the latest at the middle of June. Now, there are 39 strategic planning templates. This is a really ambitious effort that the city of Maplewood is taking department by department. Um, and I know all of the hard work that went into this because I reviewed all 39 of these strategic planning templates, pretty much word by word. Um, so an awful lot of work has gone into this. It's gonna be a really incredible document uh, when you see it in its uh, entirety, and hopefully in, in the next month or so. So what I'm gonna show you now um, is just a few strategic planning templates. So you get a sense uh, what this looks like and, and a sense of what some of the goals are. So um, I think we have about seven or eight of these strategic planning templates that um, we're going to take a look at. So one of the goals, um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a goal that comes out of HR. They want to update the employee manual. Okay. Now, <clears throat> What would be the community indicator? How would we know um, that there's an updated employee manual? Well, the indicator would be that you have a clear, concise, inclusive employee manual. And that's how you know that it's been updated. That, that's, that would be the community indicator. And you can see the kinds of things that will be engaged in, in terms of the actions that will be engaged in, in terms of updating the employee manual. You know, it's basically looking at, at what we're going to do um, to ensure that it's, it has inclusive policies and practices, it has the best um, DEIB principles and practices in it. This um, ideally will be completed by the end of 2023, so the end of this calendar year. Um, who's gonna be accountable for this? Um, well, basically, there's going to be a full review of the manual every four years led by the leadership team. So that the leadership team is going to be responsible for this. Well, the performance measure for this. Well, you know, how do you how do you basically um, assess whether you have a really good, clear, concise, inclusive employee manual? Well, the way this is going to be um, measure, measured is with an employee satisfaction survey. Because of course, an employee manual lays out what employees are supposed to do in terms of policies and practices. So are employees satisfied? One of the questions that might be asked in this is, do you, does the manual give you a roadmap or a clear indication of your job responsibilities and what you're supposed to do as an employee of the city of Maple? So this is one, this is what they all look like. So this is one. I'm not going to read each one and go through each one, but you'll get a sense. Another goal is to incorporate equity inclusion language into board and commission deliberations. Okay, So basically, you can see what this looks like. What's going to be the community indicator that um, equity inclusion language has been incorporated into board and commission deliberations? Well, basically, if you look at um, board and the minutes in board and uh, board and commission meetings, you know, do the um, minutes language in the minutes reflect DEIB principles and practices? So they're going to they're going to have to figure out basically what language do we want to see in that in in that we want to include in our deliberations. 
by the end of the year, the city manager and the staff liaisons will be accountable. And this is this might be sort of like ticking little boxes, but liaisons will monitor the number of times that a board member, board commission member actually references equity inclusion language over the course of a year. Okay. To modify existing bathroom and locker facilities to gen gender neutral uh, status. Well, what would be the community indicator? This is pretty simple. That bathroom and locker room facilities are welcoming to all gender identities. Basically, that would be the, a very logical community indicators. Um, what would be the performance measure here? Uh, well, very obviously that by the end, as you see, by the end of, by fall 2023, all bathroom and locker facilities are gender neutral. Another one is to increase occupancy across the city to com combat rising housing and rental costs. And again, you can see what the community indicator is there, what the actions are. There's an 11 month timeline on this. The inspector and public works director is gonna be accountable for this. And you can see what the performance measure is. Um, another goal is to initiate a city of Maplewood volunteer day for city employees. So again, how would you know whether this goal is being initiated? Well, so the city employees are out there in the community, basically actively volunteering in projects and activities to better the quality of life for all Maple, Maplewood residents. And people see that, oh, the city employees are like here being a part of the community volunteering. Okay? So that would be the community indicator. And then you can see the rest of it as you go across there. Um, another goal is to extend, establish an annual DEIB award for city workers and community members. Again, you can see the community indicator there, what actions are gonna be put in place to basically establish this, the timeline for it, who's gonna be accountable and what would be the performance measure? Well, it's very obvious that you award this, this DEI uh, award is going to be presented annually. So, I mean, if you establish an annual DEI B award for city workers and for community members, the performance measure is you actually present the award. Um, a goal to conduct training on fair and impartial policing. Um, what would be the community indicator? Well, we see that Maplewood police officers enforce laws in a fair and impartial manner. You see the actions, uh, training would be a, a part of that. The timeline is annually, the chief of police would be accountable for this. And what would be the performance measure? Well, collecting data on complaints of bias and policing practices from the community. Uh, to keep seniors in their homes and apartments, what's known as aging in place, so that people can age in place. Well, how would you know what would be the community indicator to seniors living in their homes and apartments, and apartments with a degree of independence? They can age in place. They don't have to you know, go into nursing homes or, or anything else. They can actually stay in their homes with a degree of independence. Um, and then you can see the rest of it there. Um, another goal is to increase presence at annual high school job fair and potentially trade schools. And the city of Maplewood has a visible and culturally diverse presence and active involvement in annual high school job fair and trade schools. And then you can see basically the rest of it as, as it goes along there. Um, I believe this is the last one. Yeah. Um, so that basically, I'll just go back to this for a minute. So what you will see when you get this, the, act, the full strategic plan is 39 of these templates. Um, from various departments in the city with specific goals, indi community indicators, actions, timelines, accountability, and performance measures. So they will look like this. So you get a sense now of what's going to be in the strategic plan. And as I said, an awful lot of work went into this and um, the department heads and um, folks in each department are really to be commended for all the work they did in putting together these, um, these templates. Um, so this is the strategic plan in action, and I'm not going to, of course, read all of these, but this is part 
of the strategic plan in action. These are some of the things that actually have already been done that come out of the strategic plan. So the strategic plan is already operational um, because you can see by these bullet points here that there are many things that have already been accomplished um, that have come out of the strategic plan. Um, here are a few more. Um, so even though the strategic plan really hasn't formally gone into operation yet, it really is operational because an awful lot of things have already um, taken place that relate to action, action plan that are in the strategic plan. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. McFeeters to talk about the DEIB policy. Thank you, Cortland, and good evening, uh, Mayor Knapper. Good evening, City Council. It is a pleasure uh, to speak with you again. Um, so I had the privilege um, and pleasure of working with the City um, Council, well, excuse me, the, the City Head and the Department Heads, the City Manager and the Department Heads to develop a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging policy. You can go to the next slide. Portland. Um, so it was communicated to us that it would be important to have a policy that was grounded in the racial equity framework that was recommended, <clears throat> excuse me, by the Forward Through Ferguson Commission. Um, and that commission included three specific stages, and that was awareness of inequity, understanding of why inequity exists and transforming towards equity, the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging policy. So I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about what the policy is designed to do, and then I'll share a few aspects of the policy. So the policy is designed to center diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging within the policy making and the decisions and budgets um, <clears throat> practices and programs, um, city recruitment, hiring, onboarding, and orientation of new employees, new volunteers, board members, and committee members. Um, the policy is also designed to support housing, education, public safety, and access uh, to services initiatives. Ultimately, the policy will ensure that the city has a non-discriminatory approach to conducting business um, that also provides equal opportunity for employment and advancement throughout the entire city of Maplewood. You can go to the next slide, Cortland. So the approach that we used um, to develop the policy was we reviewed um, the five-year strategic plan goal statements that Cortland just talked about. Um, I started early in the drafting phase um, of those goal statements and then just made the updates as those goal statements were updated. Um, I began to identify things that were based in a few different focus areas based on what the department heads identified. Um, so once I didn't identify those themes, I grouped similar goal statements in those themes. And then we had sort of a back and forth in terms of reviewing and make, making edits um, between myself, uh, Michael, and the department heads. If we can go to the next slide. So the outcome. Um, and I'm not sure if you have a copy of the of the actual policy in the room. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Okay, no problem. But I'll just give you a brief overview of what you will see. So the policy is designed around um, five different focus areas, marketing and communications, recruitment and employment, <clears throat> supporting our employees, leaders and the community and access to services. You can go to the next slide. So some of the things that you will see that this policy is designed to address include assisting residents in aging in place. And 
on the actual policy, we outline just a few details about how that will happen. Um, cultural celebrations that embrace Maplewood's diversity. Um, the policy is designed to address um, how cultural celebrations will be, um, or diversity will be embraced through cultural celebrations. A city workforce that reflects Maplewood's diverse population. We have key uh, bullet points that address this area as well. Professional development opportunities that reflect DEIB and those principles for city personnel and council members. And then we also talk about boosting affordable housing um, by gathering data to increase the, um, the occupancy in current units. You can go to the next slide. And then the next two slides actually, um, we'll just, I'll just give you just a couple of bullets there in terms of what the policy covers. Um, internal and external groups um, providing ongoing feedback to the five-year strategic plan that is outlined in the policy. Um, we have some details around the, uh, the social services coordinator and um, the role that that coordinator um, has currently. Um, the policy addresses the internships, um, scholarships, and the high school job fair opportunities for the youth and adults. It also discusses inclusive employee benefits um, for employees and, and their families. And then it addresses the annual training on the fair and uh, impartial po uh, policing, excuse me, policing, racial profiling, and implicit bias. So as you can imagine, the department's heads really worked really hard to come up with some um, thoughtful, really thoughtful ideas around what this policy would address. And so the next slide. The, um, the DEIB policy also addresses the DEIB award, DEIB award for city and community members. It, um, deter it talks about incorporating equity and inclusion language into the board and commission deliberations. It also talks about the volunteer day for city staff to help residents or organizations. Now, so, again, some of these terms sound familiar because we use the goal statements to develop the policy. Um, finally, the, uh, the policy talks about modifying the existing bathroom and locker room facilities so that they are gender neutral. And then it also um, discusses how the city manager will provide quarterly updates to the city council. Um, and the next slide. Okay, so we got to the end. <laughs> okay, so... Um, at this time, we will um, be happy to address any questions uh, that you have uh, about the policy or the five-year plan. Thank you. Hi, this is Mayor Knapper. I, I appreciate the work that you've done with the city. I think that this looks great. I don't, so I don't have any questions, really just a comment. Uh, great job to um, uh, the city's uh, department heads, our city manager, and the partnership that the city has had with ConstructNet. I think that this is a great work product. Thank you. Thank you. Like what was stated, just a comment, the... Uh, We'll have in uh, three or so weeks um, the full strategic plan with all the templates, and we'll make that available to council, of course, and to the public, and put that on the website and get that out. So we look forward to having that. So, and we'll, 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 we're going to promote this, obviously, brag about it. Promote it. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Madam Clerk, item number 46 Determination of Parks and Recreation Fees. Councilman McCoy? Yes, thank you. Um, 
I'm going to take you guys on a little bit of a, a little bit of a travel here. I want to explain to you uh, kind of how this came uh, came into my wheelhouse here, and um, I want to kind of explain to you what I've tried to do to take care of this and uh, kind of make this thing be uh, right for the city and be for uh, the youth sports. So uh, I'm I'm also on the board of youth sports. Uh, it's a volunteer board. Nobody gets paid. Um, I'm a coach for youth sports. Also, I've got uh, seven-year-old i got a 10-year-old several sports i coach several teams um and it came to my attention that um the city wanted to start charging for park fees which has never happened historically has never happened we've never charged youth sports for anything uh youth sports has prided themselves in being extremely affordable uh being accommodating um and to give you a little bit of um a little bit of information on the youth sports i, I know um uh, Mr. Lewis spoke on it. Um, there's about a thousand participants per year, so uh, that's not a thousand uh, different. That could be myself having three kids. That could be my three kids playing multiple sports, right? So that th all of those fees are going to come back on me specifically, or one individual. So if you have four children, two sports, it's a lot of money in the end. Um, when these fees came through for the youth sports. Um, it, it was going to be so significant that it was going to have to cause an increase in registration fees. Uh, the youth sports is a nonprofit. Uh, they, we, they uh, don't generate any real revenue at the end of the year between scholarships and buying new equipment and things like that. If, if, uh, if there's a couple thousand dollars left over in profit from something that would be probably about right. You know, maybe a couple thousand dollars. Um, so what this inevitably will do is the city is going to charge youth sports for field times, and this is just simply going to pass these charges right on to the community. Um, so this is one, uh, one really easy, really direct way that we can remain equitable and affordable in our community by simply not requesting fees from youth sports, uh, not charging our community for something that we've never charged before, we've never had money for before. Um, and, and we don't need, we're looking at, I think, uh, a record year for the parks last year, if I'm not mistaken, from the last budget meeting we have, uh, very, very large amount of money. Um, so I, uh, when I first heard this, I wanted to have a meeting with uh, the city manager and uh, the head of the parks department. Uh, and so we sat down and we had a meeting. Uh, we met for about two hours and discussed um, what was going on, uh, why this fee was being accrued. I was not around when some of this stuff was done, as well as uh, Mr. Reese was not around when some of this stuff was done. So to kind of familiarize ourselves with the situation and how we came to where we're at. Um, and through that conversation, it was realized that um, the city and the parks board um, would like the youth sports board to have uh, some better policies as far as their uh, scholarships goes and their financial aid. Um, and it was expressed to me during that meeting um, that if those things were met, if those things were done, the city would be more than happy uh, to talk to the parks board and work with whatever they say as far as no fees or keeping things as they were. Um, and so the youth sports board has met, they have met those obligations. And when I reached back out to uh, our city manager, uh, he expressed to me that that wasn't the case. That wasn't what he agreed with. So although his department head had said that and he was there, um, and didn't say otherwise, that's what we were led to believe was going to be the case. Um, and then lo and behold, that was not the case. Um, I'm extremely disappointed in staff's position on how we're approaching this, the amount of resources that the city is putting into charging our community, uh, the amount of time we've put in. Uh, there was more of a PowerPoint on field rentals uh, than we got as counsel for our DEI presentation. Uh, which really leads into part of what we're here to do. We're keeping things affordable, keeping things equitable for our community. Um, and I think it's very odd that we have that before this, and now we're here to talk about charging a nonprofit organization of volunteers um, of our children who wanting to play sports. Um, so a couple of things that I, I want to bring up and um, give you some information on. Um, I find it really hard to say the words equitable and affordable while we're trying as a city to create barriers. So by charging these fees, that's all we're doing. We're establishing barriers. And so um, if we're if we're trying to say we're making things more accessible for somebody else, when we have a thousand kids that we are already providing a great 
fair, accessible, cost affordable uh, place for them to go and have a good time and be kids and be, uh, it's not even just the kids, it's the parents. So I was at uh, Ryan Hummert this evening and there was uh, two softball teams, two MRH teams playing themselves and there was two baseball teams together. And what do you got? You got parents all over the place. You got kids everywhere. Everybody is enjoying the park as the park's intended, right? This is this is what we want to do as Maplewood. This, this to me is my message that we want to send. We are here to support our community. We are here to keep our community affordable. We are here to let anybody know in our community that if they're going to come in and they're going to be a nonprofit and they're going to do good for our community, we're going to support them. That would be the message that I would stand with. That would be the message that I would hope everybody else would. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been uh, the reaction and the the message that I've got from staff. So, um, uh, da, 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 da. one of the other things that was said to me from Michael is it's 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 not about the money. So my my question back to that was if it's not about the money, then what is it? And that's where the the equitable part came. And if uh, if a family was wanting to use a park, um, it's not available because youth sports is there now. I go to parks all the time. If you go to the park and you want to use the ball field, it's open. No, no family is calling the city and saying, hey, uh, the, ba the ball field's open, can I rent it? I'm not getting charged those fees, right? So that, that side of things, I, I just don't see. I don't think that holds water. Um, another thing I want to point out, um, Maplewood is a leader in several policies. We do so many things in our community that other communities do not do. We are leaders in several, several different aspects. And, and just because someone next to us is charging their community fees does not mean we have to do that. Um, so it's, it's my position that uh, the city of Maplewood should not be charging Maplewood, Richmond Heights, youth sports, any fees. It would also be my position that any nonprofit in our community that wishes to use our parks should be allowed to use our parks. They should be allowed to use our parks for free, and we should support them anytime we can. Yes. So we do yeah, have those basketball as well. Yeah, there's volleyball, volleyball, basketball. Uh, so uh, as far as rentals for indoor, yeah, right. So uh, youth sports does use the school, the school gymnasium. They do not charge. Is I, I believe that's correct. They also don't charge the scouts. We also use it a lot. I mean, I would just like to add that youth sports has allowed by children to play many sports for a reduced fee for many years because my family met the income limit so yeah. and, and that's all been changed so the the, the way that the, uh, the the way that the financial aid works now is those who are in need of financial aid that apply for financial aid we, we are going to make sure that they get the financial aid the full financial aid that they need i feel like i would be Less on a limb than I've ever felt. I'm saying I think this council wants to not have that happen. I don't think we want to see youth sports being charged for usage of the community that they exist in. And, you know, whatever the load of making that happen, if it's an ordinance, a bill, uh, I'm on board. If it's not voting for the budget, I'm on board. This is serious stuff. I, I have no, there, there's no, to, I have no tolerance for this issue. So whatever we need to do, sort it out. I'm on board. I just don't know. I'm looking to you for guidance, Mayor. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, before we go on, I want to make sure, Mr. Reese, do you have a presentation that you would like to give? Okay. So um, y'all, uh, I'd like to give Mr. Reese an opportunity to provide uh, his position and then we will have discussion afterwards. Um, so before I um, uh, share my screen, so the following fees are determined by the city manager. Park rental fees, pool fees, pavilion fees, except for Sutton Root Park, volleyball fees, community garden fees. Why are these fees imposed in general? Generally, they're, impo they're imposed to provide equal access to park and recreation programs, services, and facilities. They help offset costs. 
and help pay for administrative maintenance costs. And it allows for um, consistent uh, fees within our parks and recreation cooperative, which is our um, cooperative with Richmond Heights. So we don't have a we have a non-competitive market between the city of Richmond Heights and Maplewood. I'm going to have some other comments in a minute, but um, I want to introduce Molly Kukaru. Um, many of you probably have not met Molly. Molly is uh, the director of Parks and Recreation for both Richmond Heights and Maplewood. Uh, as part of our Parks and Recreation Cooperative. And she's going to walk us through a, a brief presentation here. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, I'll get to talking. So maybe a week or so ago, uh, Michael and Amy, the city manager of Richmond Heights, they asked me to speak about field rentals. And I actually quickly put this presentation together for them, mainly because I'm a visual person and I think that works best in most situations. So I just wanted to point out, um, you know, NRPA, uh, National Parks and Recreation Association, they put out a big survey every year. And last year, a large majority, 87% of US adults say it's important for people to have fair and just access to high quality park and recreation program services facilities that create healthy, resilient, economically vibrant communities. I'd like to think that uh, it's 100% to some people are on vacation because I'm a big advocate for parks and recreation. So I just kind of wanted to start off with that. And then the next slide you'll see kind of the field usage and how it's broken up. So I skipped a few years. I compared really uh, 2019 to 2023, and I thought it was irrelevant maybe to put in those odd years of COVID. I wanted to more compare apples to apples. So 2019 was before I started here. But as you can see, MRHU Sports, both in 2019 and currently, takes up the largest use of the field space. So this is all the fields uh, that are available. Little Flower or the CYC League takes up relatively five to six percent. And then the MRH school district takes up that five to 7%, leaving just between 20 and maybe 25% for anybody else to use the field. Um, so I can tell you just based off of these charts, we have so many people that call and we just don't have field space available, whether it's for their church that's in the community that they just wanted to run a pickup league with, um, whether it's somebody that rented the pavilion at one of your parks that just wanted to have a ball game that afternoon for their kid's birthday party. Um, it just leaves very little time uh, to offer that for the community, much less anybody else that maybe is doing any other sort of sports league privately. So for just other teams that are local that are looking for a place to practice still. So I just wanted to explain to them why it was important that we felt the need to charge for field rentals. First off, I am all about making sure that everything is affordable, especially coming from a family of five. And I've got three boys myself that play sports. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's important to me as well. But I just wanted to point out, there's a lot of administrative time that it takes to book the fields and make sure there's adjustments with weather throughout the season making sure that the lights are set when they need to be um, to help offset the cost of maintaining the fields and the electric. Um, it limits an organization from monopolizing the fields. It holds rentals accountable to use the times that they are booked. And I kind of want to stop on that and just say that my experience from when I started was that these times, because it was free, um, multiple times were booked not allowing other people to book in case of rain or in case somebody needed to move practice one day, they would have open days and times. And it became a real problem where people were constantly calling frustrated that they couldn't rent the field because it was already rented through one of these organizations already, but nobody was at the field. Um, and I feel like that is something that we still deal with. Um, so I think that was kind of the jumping off point to what really started this. So I kind of wanted to hit on that. Um, but there's also the unnecessary field prep for no shows. Jason has seemed to do a great job and it's hard to see that when nobody shows up. 
Um, but it also allows equal access to renting it for everyone in the community, not just one organization or two organizations, but it, it allows better access for anybody. Also, there's a really high demand for field rentals in our area. We're constantly turning people away. As you can see, it is booked all the time. Um, and then the established fees that are set aren't just for Maplewood, but they are both cities. And that keeps us in a non-compete market because the two cities are in a partnership together. And then in the past, neighboring cities were benefiting from the field, the field rentals being free because their communities were charging, but they could come over here and it was free. So those were just some of the points that I wanted to bring up as to why we had said the importance of charging. So I think the next slide does show what others charge. And I, I know you kind of felt this was irrelevant, but I still feel like it's very relevant. And the fact that we're really on the lowest side of everybody else. Um, and then in 2023, and this was kind of a two year process to really look at it and review it and see the problems. And then next year to let everybody know that there would be fees. And then beginning of this year, we started charging $7.50 per hour for the rentals of the fields. Um, so then I guess if you kind of want to keep moving along, oh, and there are lighting charges for fields that do have lighting. Um, but kind of the history behind this. So in 2021, the stakeholders, um, we all met um, to inform both cities, both parties about the issues that we had with the limited field usage and the abuse of the free fields. Uh, we also spoke with the Maplewood Park Advisory Board to make them aware of the issues and that we believe that fees would be charged in the future. We agreed to give ample time in order to make everyone aware of the changes. In 2022, we notified both Little Flower and MRHU sports renters for all the seasons that beginning in January of 23, they would be charged for the fields. In 2022, we also spoke with the Maplewood Park Advisory Board again to let them know that these changes would take place in 2023. And then in 23, we did apply the field uh, rental fees to all renters. So kind of in summary here, I think we want to make sure um, you move to the next slide. In, in some I, here. I, I just stop her. Oh, sorry. The, the Parks Board was supportive of this too. So the Parks Board was supportive. <clears throat> so kind of in summary, overall, our goal is still to maintain quality fields that allow an equal opportunity for all at a reasonable rate that is beneficial for our partnership as cities. Um, You'll notice I didn't put up any fields that weren't comparable to ours, that there was no big Chesterfield sports complex up there or anything like that. I tried to keep things reasonable to what we were comparing apples to apples. So, so um, I Thank you, Mom. Mm -hmm. So as Councilman Coriel indicated, when I came on board 21 months ago, I inherited this issue. It started before I began. And, um, you know, I come at it with a fresh objective perspective. Um, I rely uh, somewhat on staff's expertise. I challenge them as well. Uh, my lens is what's best for Maplewood. And um, uh, rather than immediately charge the $15 an hour, we decided on a compromise and uh, uh, are looking to implement the 750 uh, an hour. Uh, full disclosure, the plan would be in the next, in the next couple of years to go to that $15 hour, uh, to put us uh, uh, where others are. Um, I think it's reasonable and it's a common sense approach. Um, it promotes access for all of Maplewood, resi Maplewood residents. It, it increases access to others who have historically been excluded. And um, it, it reduces and eliminates overbooking of fields that end up sitting vacant. Um, I think it's still affordable. So um, the other point I wanna make um, that's very important when it makes sense is um, this cooperative of Richmond Heights it saves us hundreds of thousands of dollars 
um, so that we don't have to have our own parks department. And, um, you know, uh, when we can partner with Richmond Heights on efforts like this, I think it's really important uh, when it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then, then we shouldn't do it. But, um, uh, you know, I don't want to be in a position where we're jeopardizing our, 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 our park agreement long term. That's the extent of my comments. Let me, Ms. Councilman please forgive me. Let me just ask just some like foundational questions. Okay, so the first question that I have, Mr. Reese, is you um, you told council that city manager determines park rental fees. Is that in an ordinance? Park rental fees, there were some other pool fees. Is that in an ordinance? Um, so Mr. Traxler is shaking his head no. Okay. Okay. So then, so essentially, the council decides that. Then is is that my understanding? Decides the fees. You, city manager. Yes. Okay. All right. So that was one. All right. Um, Miss. You're very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I was I was practicing in my mind. All right, Miss Miss Kukuru, um, did I understand you correctly when you said that um, MRH Youth Sports has stopped folks from using pavilions at parks? Did you say that? No, I didn't say they've stopped use from pavilions. So if people rent a pavilion, a lot of times they would like to rent the ball fields that are right next to them as well, but they can't because they're already booked. Okay. And then um, you, Ms. Kukuru, you also said that there are fields that will be reserved, but they're not used. Um, do you have like a, a communication policy in effect where you just, you would tell, for example, um, let's say a little flower, if you're not going to use this, then we need you to contact us within 24 hours or 48 hours? Sure, if it's weather related, everybody does contact us and everybody's pretty great about that or vice versa we might tell people hey it's really wet out here we can't use the fields today um but no there there are just times where people do not show up and we are not contacted okay and is there any type of consequence for that any like monetary penalty so it's a free rental so no there really there never has been okay all right thank you thank you uh, I do have a couple of questions also. Uh, you had mentioned that the Parks Board uh, was in agreement with these fees. Is, is that something that that you've talked to the Parks Board since we've had our conversations so recently? I have not. Right. So, so I've spoke to, to Lanny Shankleberg. Uh, she's uh, with the Parks Board. I did not go to the Parks Board specifically to talk to him about this because you said this was a Michael Reese only thing. It had nothing to do with the Parks Board. But when I spoke to Laney, she was very supportive of what we were trying to accomplish as far as keeping things affordable and not having fees to accrue more cost on uh, MRH youth sports. So um, <clears throat> uh, another question is, um, well, I was going to ask that if you answered that about the fees wanting to go up. Um, so when when they build Richmond Heights uh, youth sports, when they when they cancel, they give their fields back, right? I mean, is that that's something that you were in communication with them? They do actually give fields back, field times that they don't use. Is that correct? I'm not sure with which sports has times that they're not using. Or they do give those fields. I know for a fact that they give them back. So I just wanted to hear you say that they do because they do. You're making it like that youth sports is just taking a whole block of time and they're not using that time when in fact they do give those field times back, right? Sure. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they have. When we have called and asked specifically, then yes, they have. But there are times that they do sit empty and we do hear from other residents that are frustrated sure. that have tried to rent it. How many parks are there in Richmond Heights versus Maplewood? Sure, it's a huge difference, right? So there's really just the one park with... Has, has, has someone two sports had access to... Yes. I, I don't believe that to be true. 
So that's that's one of the things that, I, that when we talk about that cooperative, I do agree with you, and I and I do appreciate Richmond Heights and and Maplewood's cooperative. In fact, I think it's a fantastic thing. Public Works is amazing. Jason is amazing. Public Works with Richmond Heights Cooperative is amazing. Um, but there have been some some issues that I've noticed uh, as far as field disadvantages, as far as getting AB Green. Um, but I, I think it's all besides the point. Um, I really do think um, where, where I stand on this, uh, and and I hope other people share the same idea, is uh, we, we need to create evidence. We need to keep these fees um, non-existent for, in my opinion, in, you know, any nonprofit. If you're a nonprofit working in Maplewood with our community and you wish to use our spaces, I think we should be there to support them. And I think that that's important. I think that's an important message that goes along with this fantastic DEI um, presentation that we're rolling out and the policies that we're implementing in our community. Um, and I think that sends a strong message that we support our community. Um, while I don't think, um, and I can give you some tangible numbers uh, at that $15 rate, we're looking at uh, youth sports is looking at about a $15,000 a year um, starting cost. Uh, if you're down to 750, 7,500, around $7,000. And, and um, I'm just wondering, is that that kind of money is going to be, is that going to be damaging between Richmond Heights and Maplewood as far as that cooperative? Like I said, this, this is not being driven by money. Okay. I, the thing that gets me is it's, it really sounds like it's driven by money when we're talking about fees. So I have trouble understanding if it's not driven by money, what are, what are we driven by and why, why are we, why are we through about seven, eight reasons why we're charging fees and, and money was one of those reasons. So, and this is a logistical question and I'm apologizing for my own ignorance in advance. So let's say there's baseball games and they are canceling for whatever reason there's no like um there's nobody going out and checking like oh hey i've got my schedule this field is booked for two four and six on saturday it's just kind of like honor system if somebody says hey is it open or not sure no so they would get a contract and that says what times everything is rented and then in the contract it does say if there's an issue yeah. with somebody on the field you can always call the police Thanks. and they will okay so i guess what i'm kind of circling back to is um if it's not about the money which i get because honestly it's a lot of money it's it's a massive amount of money to a smaller organization but in the grand scheme of our budget it's not really and the argument being like, if you're putting some guardrails up so people don't just reserve really nilly and then not show up, because I did catch that. Is there a reason it's a fee compared to a deposit that's not charged if the group is there? Because there's a different avenue there where you could say, hey, Maplewood Youth Sports has this reserved, they're here, we're not charging them because they're showing up. Little Flower has this reserved, they're here, we're not going to hit the credit card or whatever because they were there. Because I, I get it, like you want to kind of time block your scheduling and have a little more accountability. But what is the happy medium where you can say, you showed up, you did what you were supposed to, our fields are being used, therefore we're good. Sure. So I think that goes back to staffing then, right? So now you've got to have staff that's going in and checking right. on that. We don't have it. You guys certainly don't have it. I think everybody here would agree. It's just hard to hire people in general. That's not a position that's budgeted for or anything that would be available so we don't actually know if the fields are being left empty if we don't have the staff to go and check we know by the upset people that we're trying to rent the field that's that's typically how we find out i have a question for you so pavilion rentals are all day long right from sun up to sundown so if somebody rented a pavilion, hypothetically, they could wait 45 minutes, the time it takes for a youth sports soccer game, let's say, to be done and then have access to the field. That is true, but I think what I'm saying is the fields are booked all day. So it's not just one game, it's back to back to back to back to back games all the way straight through the evenings. Can you give us like a time frame? So are you saying like 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night? Weekends, yeah. sure. I get that. I, I just one comment about that. I I'm perfectly comfortable with that fact. The parks are that's what they're for. It's like sixty eight percent is MRHU sport. MRHU sports is Maplewood. This is not if it was Webster U sports. I'd be like, well, wait a minute. But so I that number that pie chart was like, well, yeah, of course that totally makes sense. I get that there's frustrated people. I could take some guesses where they're from. 
the you know our community versus Richmond Heights. There's some income and differences like that. So I think, um, you know, this is more important in Maplewood. I get you. I get that there's an imbalance there. The no shows. My comment is making it make a policy that works. I think the deposit idea. There's other. There's creative ways you can deal with no shows. I understand that that way of doing it. Fees create commitment. Dealt with that before, but there's other ways around it. I would I would look into those. And you know, obviously, and, and Michael said it, it's not a money issue. It, it can't be. So, you know, to me, if the issue is access and who's on our fields, it ought to be Maplewood Kids. And it is. And that's awesome. I'm totally happy with that. And no, go ahead. Well, and I totally get you don't, not you personally, Parks and Rec does not have staffing to go around and say, oh, here's a checklist of who's at what park. Okay, so is it part of the contract that when somebody shows up to play, they snap a picture and text it in and say, hey, look, we're here. So you can at least say, there were people on the field at the start time, then you just, unless you get a complaint, you go back. I don't know. I shouldn't, I'm not going to solution excessively well on any of this, but yeah. I have several questions about the data. Um, some of you provided and some data maybe we don't have. You might go back to the slide with the garden. This one? Yes, thank you. So, so this, to me, it looks like hourly rates, resident and non-resident. I'm interested to know if these municipalities are charging their own nonprofit youth sports organizations for the use of the fields. Um, and if so, are they charging them that resident rate or something else? And I think to make a determination on this and make an informed decision, I'd like to know that. And I have some ideas about some of, some of them just from competing, and I don't think that they are charging their nonprofit youth sports groups for use of those fields. Um, I think to me, this is not the data that we would need to make that determination. I'm also wondering, you know, just doing some napkin math here, like, yeah, yeah. So they do, they do charge the any other non for profits are charged. So the only people of these cities that aren't charged would be if a school district is using it, the school districts aren't charged, or if it's a program within uh, that municipality is holding. An example would be yeah. Brentwood, our neighbor. They have their own softball leagues, so they don't charge their own fees to their own softball leagues within the same department. The Parks and Rec department runs. So that that's different than the way it thinks because it's you're talking about like the city of Brentwood has their own. Correct. Okay. It would be like if Maplewood had their own. Um, yeah, if it was run by the city. Yeah. I, I asked the same question. Mm -hmm. I asked that same question. I'm also curious about the not being driven by money. I'm just doing some napkin math based on how often I'm at Deer Creek Park with my son's, my, my fifth grade son's team. Um, we're there two nights a week at a minimum for either practice or a game. Practices are 90 minutes, so that'd be two hours. Games are usually two hours. Um, and if you just figure conservatively eight weeks for May and June at 750 an hour, that's 32 hours a week we're there. That's 240 bucks for one team. And Maplewood fourth grade has two teams. And then you have K through eight plus male and female. It seems like a lot of money that we're going to be charging MRH youth sports. And that onus, I think, will be passed on to the parents who are paying a registration fee. So as far as the equity goes, I don't think it, it seems to be MRH youth sports targeted here instead of, I mean, I see playing volleyball every time I'm at Deer Creek Park. I don't think they paid the $5 fee to reserve that sand volleyball court. I think they've walked up and played because I've seen it happen. Uh, my kids go and play on the ball field and they haven't reserved it and paid the fee. So I, it, to me, it seems a little bit like we're targeting MRH youth sports because of the volume of use. And that seems to be driven by money. So I have a hard time equating all that in my mind. Does that make sense? It's not really a question, more of a comment maybe, but um, I think 15,000 is based on some quick math here, but that seems like the low end of what it might cost for all the different sports just for the summer. Um, so I, I, I'm very much in support of not charging. Um, MLH Youth Sports as a nonprofit, I think provide a great service for all the youth in Maplewood. I want to go back to um, a comment that was made about non 
non compete, Ms. Kukuru. Um, can you help me understand where we would have an issue regarding competition with Richmond Heights when we are not charging MRH youth sports? Where, where is there a conflict regarding competition between Maplewood and Richmond Heights? I, I think it would just be that we charge for AB Green the $15 for the field use versus not being charged for the other fields. So that would be the competition. I get it. It's a different park. I fully understand that. Okay. It, it, it would keep our fees the same. Okay. And then uh, Council Member Correll, you said that MRH and Sports doesn't really have access to AB Green. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So they do, but they just, nobody particularly wants to use AB Green. Everybody has access to it. Everybody wants to use AB Green. It has the best baseball and best soccer field. So I, the, the AB Green sports, I'll tell you. Available. Yeah, everybody wants AB Green. <laughs> so. So to answer your question, Councilmember Page, um, what can be done? I'm going to direct that question to Mr. Reese because pretty much uh, from what I understand and hear from the council, we do not want to charge MRH youth sports for the use of Maplewood fields. If that is a part of our budget, then we're going to need to make an amendment to it. So can you talk to us about um, whether an amendment will need to be made um, and next steps if so? Yeah, I need to um, I'm digesting this as you're as you're raising my phone. Let's not share this for a second. I'm gonna bring that in. Lexi, did you hear that question? I, I honestly don't know if we counted uh, fees within our budget, the point point three point one four budget, and whether you would uh, need to amend the budget according. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. We do have a $240,000, um, I believe it's $240,000 that we pay annually to park the property. That's what we pay in the present fiscal year, and that's what we're pay, planning on paying um, next year. If these fees are not put in place, does that does that potentially um, cause that to need to be adjusted? The question I'm raising, kind of rhetorical. I'm not sure that I have another answer to that. Um, so uh, I can get back to you on that. I can get back to you on that. Thank you. And I know I I used. Uh, our MRH youth sports as the example, but I'd like to uh, echo what Councilmember Correll said about nonprofit organizations not being charged. Can I comment on that? Yeah. And I, well, just so that we don't get accused of groupthink, I'm not sure that's entirely necessary. I work for a nonprofit and I expect to pay if I'm using, um, you could narrow that focus, I think, to say, you know, Maplewood focused nonprofits or based, but, you know, if my big giant national nonprofit comes in and wants to rent a field, we should pay, and we would. Um, but I think you could write it in such a way where you could say, if a Maplewood nonprofit or one that benefits, you know, 
some determination there, but I, I wouldn't give carte blanche to the whole nonprofit world. We we have budgets. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Same. You should charge them. I mean, you could take it on a case by case basis. If there's one that's it's a cause that's important to Maplewood, by all means, make a charitable contribution. But I think you know when we when I plan events, I expect to pay. So. Just this, this is this is me with my lawyer hat on, and I'm going to take it off and, and allow um, Attorney Graves to wear it. <laughs> but when I say nonprofits, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that nobody is going to say that we're discriminating. So um, that's why I said that I agree with you, but I want to make sure that we are not uh, sued. So um, Attorney Graves, if I'm not asking for it yet. Will you come back to us as well and just let us know? Could we could we have something like that where it's uh, Maplewood, Richmond Heights? Heights. Uh, I'm saying Richmond Heights because I'm thinking of MRH Youth Sports, but so. Thank you. So just so I'm clear, even though these fees are determined by a city manager, you're asking me to not to not implement that. The, the short answer is yes. Um, I, that's why I asked the question, who are they determined by? And is there an ordinance that says that? And from the responses that I received from you all, there is no ordinance that says that. And so ultimately, you are advising us as to what the fee should be. And then we determine if we agree with it. Just so that I understand, if it came to it, we could pass an ordinance that states we're not. Yeah. Yes. I was going to add. I I understand the reason for the discussion and the ne the necessity to revisit the fee structure. Um, I think looking at it from resident, non-resident only, to me is maybe a little bit limited, and maybe like a group rate, corporate versus nonprofit. I still think we should exempt MRH Youth Sports and Maplewood nonprofits. My wife worked for a nonprofit. She booked a room at AV Green last week and she paid a resident rate because we're members and we live in Maplewood. Um, so maybe there is room for discussion on some of those things where we could change the fee structure so that large corporate entities that want to live in a pavilion pay a, large, um, a higher rate than others. Um, I think there are ways to recoup some of those costs, but not necessarily on the backs of MRH youth sports. So I'd be in favor of that and certainly open to discussing it. And I'll get back to council on the uh, budget question. Um, thank you. I just want to thank everybody for, for bearing with that long-winded discussion. I appreciate everybody's time and I appreciate everybody's effort that they all put into it. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, all, right here. all right, Madam Clerk, item number 47. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zoned out there for a moment. I understand. 2023 Maplewood Juneteenth celebration. Okay, um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, the Juneteenth celebration started as a wonderful idea um, that came from Shil Suniwa, who is the executive director for Artists First. And um, it started as like a community celebration. And for two years in a row, it's been that. It. We want to continue to keep it a community celebration that when um, I met with the team, team, which consists of uh, our fellow chief, Chief Nasek, um, our the uh, executive director for, director for the library, uh, Ashley Bryant, community member Susan Peck, Officer Hoskins, uh, and then also a, a library staff person named Andrea. And uh, it was actually Ms. Bryant's idea to move the celebration from the Yale uh, Park area to the library if it rained. And then she said, you know, it'd be really great if we could have access to the pool and allow the community to have this Juneteenth celebration at the pool. And so everyone became excited and then everyone just started to build on top of that. And so my request to council excuse me, is that um, 
our community have a Juneteenth celebration where from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. the pool is free. Um, and then after that, after that time, I, I will expect for the pool to tell everyone, okay, you guys got to go. <laughs> if you want to come back in, you have to pay. Um, but if we have two hours, um, it will be free. And we'll have activities um, in a part of the uh, parking lot, like the, the parking lot that's closest to the skate park. So we'll have activities going on there, like um, reading to the kids, uh, face painting, we'll have food. I mean, it's just a big old party, y'all. Uh. So how, what do y'all think? I think it's an amazing idea. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I heard food in there, so I'm open. <laughs> awesome. Simon, I was at the very first one. I am. All right. So, okay, y'all. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Reese, um, if you would let us know, this is kind of on par with our last discussion. It deals with parks. Can you let us know what needs to be done? So, on June seventeenth, from eleven to two p.m., it's free water play. Um, and I. I understand that we have a, a resident day, but this is not like a resident day. Like you would just be able to come and you don't have to have like a bill that shows you're a Maplewood resident. So if Richmond Heights folks wanted to come, they could come or something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, item number 48. Old business. Madam Clerk, item number 49. Council communication. Madam Clerk, item number 50. Mayor's report. Thank you. All right, y'all. I will keep my report um, short. I received a request by a community member named Mrs. Savannah Webster. Uh, her daughter lives with Williams Syndrome. And uh, I she asked me to create a proclamation recognizing May as William Syndrome Awareness Month in the city of Maplewood. And so at this time, hopefully she's joined us at this time, I'd like to read the proclamation. Whereas William Syndrome is a rare genetic condition that is present in about one in 10,000 births worldwide with the estimated 20,000 to 30,000 in the United States. Whereas Williams syndrome is characterized by medical and cognitive problems, including cardiovascular disease, developmental delays in learning, disabilities, and occurs equally in both males and females in every culture. Whereas the Williams Syndrome Association, WSA, founded in 1982, is a nonprofit organization that provides comprehensive resources for people and families living with Williams Syndrome, as well as for doctors, researchers, and educators. Through its efforts from raising public awareness to funding critical new research and providing valuable information and support to families, the WSA has improved the quality of life and futures for those affected by Williams Syndrome. Whereas to generate awareness about Williams Syndrome and raise funding for critical WSA programs and initiatives, the WSA has organized May as Williams Syndrome Awareness Month, which includes awareness efforts all across the United States. Whereas the Williams Syndrome Association, as well as the families and friends of those with Williams Syndrome should be commended for their hard work, compassion, and courage for educating the country about this rare disorder. Now, therefore, I, Nikhilan Knapper, Mayor of the City of Maplewood, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2023 as Williams Syndrome Awareness Month in Maplewood, Missouri, and commend its observance to all citizens. I'd like to thank Ms. Webster for reaching out um, to me and requesting that proclamation. It was an honor to provide it to her, and um, I, I appreciate the knowledge of, or learning about this and her sharing her knowledge of this syndrome because it affects her family. And uh, I'm very happy to have this proclamation. So thank you, Ms. Webster, if you're joining us via Zoom. Uh, the other item that I'd like to just make you all aware of, the Mayor's Elder Task Force is um, going through its assistance program 
to elders for the property tax assessment. And so I have two folks that have signed up. I'm really excited. <laughs> so so um, this, this Thursday, I will be at the library assisting them. And then I had another uh, community member reach out to me this afternoon, and she signed up for June. So we are cooking with Crisco. And if you all know any other elders that are concerned about their property tax assessment and would like help filing an appeal, please tell them to um, check out the flyer that we have on our social is regarding me, and then they can contact me and um, and we'll get them scheduled. And yes, yeah, you get to talk to me. Everybody that talks to me is like, I don't know, I'll be talking to the man. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. You got it. So, all right, that concludes my report. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 51. City Attorney's Report. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 52. City Manager's Report. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. I have two things. Um, on another fee matter, um, we um, uh, just didn't get it done for this council meeting, but um, our plan is for the June 13th council meeting to submit an ordinance to you all that um, follows up on the April 25th work session that um, when we presented the variety of fees under uh, related to plan and zoning and building, the building department. And that was like the fence permits and occupancy inspections and construction inspections and all those fee increases. So that will all be in one ordinance. Um, we'll submit that for your consideration um, for the June 13th meeting. Um, so I'm gonna report out on that. And then as I suspected, um, Lexi had texted me. He wasn't able to connect uh, on Zoom, but um, uh, you do not need to adjust the budget at all as it relates to our prior discussion with park rental fees. Um, it just, uh, if those don't go forward, it will, it will um, impact our fund balance. So um, that's the consequence, uh, like, like the consequence. So, so that, that's, the, that's the update on it, okay? And that's all I have. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 53. Public forum. At this time, Oh, at this time, those that are joining us in the chamber are invited to step to the podium to provide public comment. If you're joining us uh, online via Zoom, please raise your hand and Mr. Reese will call upon you. Okay, I have to press the button. Awesome. Hi, I'm Beth Newman, 7401 Gayola Place. Um, I just wanted to, just in light of the discussion, I am a member of the Parks Board. I do want to make it clear that I'm not speaking on behalf of the Parks Board. I'm just speaking on behalf of myself, but I am a member of, of the Parks Commission. Um, I really do appreciate the discussion. I, it was really interesting. Um, and I understand that it is it can be somewhat a delicate discussion. There are you know members of our Parks Board that are also on the MRH Youth Sports Board. Um, and again, I, I really do appreciate the discussion and, and all of the viewpoints. Um, I just wanted to sort of make clear, just from someone who is on the Parks Commission, um, the idea for the fee was presented to us. I couldn't tell you what month it was. Um, Mr. Traxler, and I always pronounce this lovely person's name. Kukuru. Ms. Ms. Kukuru, thank you. Ms. Kukuru and Mr. Traxler presented the information to us and sort of described to us why, you know, similar to information that you got, um, why uh, there should be fees charged. Um, at the time, based on the information that we had, we thought it seemed like a good idea. Also, in addition, at that time, or maybe probably six months prior to that, the MRH Youth Sports um, Group had offered to give the Park Sport $20,000 for new dugouts. So combined with that information and then what we were given at the time, we were sort of like, yeah, that seems like a good idea. However, I do want to know that that was not a vote. Like we didn't all like sit around and vote and say like, yes, they should be charged or no, they shouldn't be charged. I mean, to be frank, we don't really have that kind of authority on the Parks Commission. I know some people think we have a lot of authority in certain ways, but in that way, we, we really don't have that kind of authority. So um, the bottom line is it's really, I mean, the priority for us is that 
families and kids who want to play sports, if they can afford it, it was always a priority for us on the Parks Commission, or for me, I, as I'm not speaking for the Parks Commission, that those kiddos and those families have full scholarships. That was the priority for us. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, no hands on Zoom there. Thank you. May I have a motion to close to hold a closed session to discuss matters uh, that involve personnel? So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Farrell? Yes. Councilmember Falkingham? Councilmember Garcia? Yes. Councilmember Homa? Yes. Mayor Canaver? Yes. Councilmember Maddox? Yes. Councilmember Page? Yes. Thank you. At this time, council is going to go into closed session. Those joining us via Zoom, we will not return. Those joining us in the chamber, we will return, but I don't know if y'all want to wait. You're welcome to go. Yes, yes. Good job, y'all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.